Hello guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with a new question. This is not a lead code question. This is a system design question and this is the first time I am going to do a video on system design. So let's get started. This question is about a uh, social network. You can find this in Cracking the Coding interview uh, book 6th uh, edition. So th this is actually uh, a, a a problem that deals with system design and scalability the second problem you can go through it and you can pause the video and read so the question goes something like this we need to design uh, the data structures for a very large social network like facebook or uh, linkedin so for in this they are asking us to focus on a specific feature that is we need to find the shortest path between two people for example in facebook you have friends and friends of friends etc so you have mutual friends and all that concept and even you have the same thing in linkedin so what you need to do is you need to find a set of friends and then you need to find the link or the path the shortest path between two friends so i've demonstrated with this uh, diagram so a is a person a is friend with B, B is friend with C and C is with D and the, all these people are connected with, in, a, in the form of a graph. So what we need to find out, we need to find out the shortest path between the source and the destination. Let's consider D is the destination. So the shortest path will be A, B, C and D. So now uh, what we need to do is uh, we need to first uh, imagine, just think about this so, uh, problem. How would you approach to this kind of problems? You need to first uh, think uh, uh, who is the uh, uh, friend of A and how do you approach so it is a simple graph problem where you need to use either BFS or DFS approach guys this uh, idea and this explanation is strictly taken from cracking the coding interview this is not of my knowledge so uh, this video is uh, uh, made for those people who are uh, having a little problem reading the cracking coding interview because that is of really high standard so i i'm here to simply share my knowledge with you guys so that uh, we can get to know about this topic uh, uh, very clearly so now the first approach that comes in anybody's mind is why can't we go with the dfs approach because a is if you start from node a you can go to b c and d and there you get you meet d and that is the path but dfs approach is good but it is inefficient because uh, you need to if you want to go from a to d you need to first traverse through one of the a's child and then go to the depth of it again come back again go to the depth of it again go back again go to this depth again go back and then come to this depth so this is uh, actually inefficient so the best way to do is a breadth first search which is also called bfs so because in bfs you just have uh, you, need, you need to iterate through the depths so a will start with a b and s and the next time it will go to t and the next node of b that is c so the uh, approach that uh, the author is following here is something called as a bi-directional breadth, breadth first search which means you're doing breadth first search from the different directions that we are doing from the source and you're doing from the destination so instead of doing uh, everything in a linear complexity you will have it in a little lesser than that probably log n complexity because for each iteration you are reducing uh, uh, the number of uh, uh, nodes to be searched so yeah so, that, so that's how you need to uh, do so you you will start from here and at the same time you will start from here and if you encounter the same nodes in a either of the queues then you are done guys that then there is a collision and that will be the shortest part so now what we're supposed to do is i'll just go to iterate through this particular problem uh, what the author is considering here is uh, she is taking uh, entity person obviously because a is a type of person this is a system design question so we need to uh, figure out what a is it is a smallest entity so let's take a class person so this uh, class person will have a person id and other details so what is she mentioning here so in a particular person class we have uh, you know uh, a person uh, details person id and person name and all that so she has not exclusively mentioned the person class and the next thing that she is taking care is a path node path node is nothing but something that is very similar to a node that you find in a linked list 
uh, which has a node uh, and that particular node will have a data uh, int uh, int data and node next similarly it is she is considering the whole a part as a node so she is mentioning path node so this particular node will have information about that particular uh, a a is actually a person so now you imagine that uh, uh, this particular node is of uh, the node in a linked list wherein you have node and you have integer so let's consider imagine this person to be uh, an integer data way which you which is equivalent in the in the node of a linked list so similarly now this node will have no in just like how you have node next in linked list you have a node uh, previous so this will actually point to the uh, the previous uh, 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 previous node of the this particular this is mainly done in order to have a relationship between one node and another node so that's why she is taking in the form of a node the second important part that she is mentioning in this is is the class bfs data so now you have two classes one class is the node class and the second class is the bfs data class so you might ask me so what is the need of having this bfs class because you already have a main class and in that main class you can simply write two queues you can add elements from a pop it and put it in that q1 and at the same time you can have a q2 you can pop elements from d add it in q2 and you and these two can come in in different directions and they'll meet at some point but guys this is not a simple algorithm question this is a system design question so it is always advisable and good to maintain the bfs data in a bfs class that's why we have a bfs data class uh, this is also a class and this is also a class and then in this bfs data class you have a queue and you have a map hash map so why are we having a queue why are we having a hash map i'll tell you we have a queue because when we are starting from a particular bfs no bfs data or a, or a particular bfs class object we need to maintain the node at that particular uh, class for example you are starting from a so in from a you have to have um, you know you have to have uh, the value of a should be first popped up should be first placed in the queue and the value should be placed in the map so after that when you as you move you have to remove the value of a from the queue and you have to find the children of a add those respective values to the same queue so that keeps uh, moving so that's the reason why now it's advisable to have a particular class bfs data you can go through the source code of it and this bfs data will have a person object in the constructor obviously because bfs data is all about the person it's about the queue and it's about the map so queue is actually the nodes or the uh, yeah queue is nothing but these nodes that are supposed to be visited uh, next and map is actually Uh, the link between the particular integer and the node that is the uh, person id and the person so something like this so this will be the map so the suppose if uh, if suppose there is a you will have a q you will have a in q uh, and uh, a's uh, previous will be null because there is no element and uh, the a's uh, person will be a it will be stored in the node a now that particular node will be linked to this q so q will now have this q will now have the node objects in it hope you get it guys and the map will have the already visited values so suppose now a is visited now b and s are added to this q now this a will be present in this map this is mainly done to keep track of the already visited nodes now let's move on to what's what exactly is is happening in this problem so in this it starts from here there is uh, the now uh, the input is nothing but a map uh, which 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 map of integers and a person object so person remember i told you to imagine person to be an integer uh, i mean similar to an integer in a linked list node so mm, these are simply uh the number and the particular person object so what you need to do is in the question they'll ask or uh the question it will be like you need to f f they'll give you the source number and they'll give you the destination number at stake 6 so you need to find the shortest path between 1 and 6 that is the question so now what we need to do is we need to first uh, so this is the input is the whole map 
and uh, the source and the destination integer objects so this is what is written here now what you're doing is you're getting the bfs data object of that particular source and the destination so yeah that's the reason why i as i told you you need to maintain uh, the tracking bfs uh, tracking so that's why we go with two different bfs so i'll explain it to you like this so there is a source uh, bfs data and a destination bfs data it's from these two now you go to the uh, now uh, you need to when create a bfs data object so how do you create you need to get the uh, get the map from so now one is given so this map dot get of one will return a person object of a and get of c will return the uh, person uh, the object of type person which has the values of d so that's why you have a a and d will be the source and destination respectively after that now what you're doing you're just uh, finding is finished so what happens let's consider the q of the source be q1 q of the destination will be q2 and the map of the source be m1 and the map of the destination be m2 now in q you will add the while the object is created here uh, it will it will it will add that particular person to the q of a so that's why a is being added similarly in d uh, destination q d will be uh, added and sim and in the map also you will have uh, one a will be added in the map and in here you will you'll add the person id and the person object in the map too now it will you'll search for is finished so is finished is source dot is finished is uh, it will tell whether um, that particular uh, if this but this is not two visit is nothing but a q as i already told you it's nothing but q1 in our context so it will check whether this q is uh, if it is empty it will return true otherwise it will return false so now in in our case both are in just now we have created these two and so there's these two are having some value so they're not empty it will enter into the uh, while loop now in the while loop this is where the exact uh, you know the processing and the business logic is about you're searching the levels so you're doing only one level at a time and in that you're passing this particular the whole hash map of people and the source and the destination bfs data so in the sur search sur uh, source and the destination you will first find the count so what is count count is nothing but size of this queue so now the size count is 1 so the uh, as count is 1 for source it will enter this i is equals to 1 and now it is going to get the, the path node here is nothing but the node of a now it is going to check the uh, the id of a that which is nothing but 1 and it will check whether that particular 1 is present in the destinations uh, uh, destinations uh, uh, map so now in destination map we have 6 and d but we are checking the source map 1 and a it is not present so what it will do if it is not present uh, it will not enter into it so if, if it is present it means that uh, you you both are meeting at some some point so it will eventually be uh, uh, i'll tell you that that later let's move on the the same thing will uh, it will not it will not enter into this if condition so what it does next so you need to find out the children of a so now it goes to the children of a and then it will add those children to this is b and this is s so these two will be added to the q now So now uh, Q uh, B is will be added here, and S will be added here. And now what happens is uh, this is what is happening in this for loop, guys. It is just trying to add the get friends of it, and for each friend, it will check whether it is not present in in the uh, in this particular map. If it is not present, it is going to add it in the Q, and it is going to add it in the map. So similarly, it will have a uh, two B. Uh, so sorry for the sound to uh, B and it will add 3 uh, S so this will be added in the map so it will exit this from this loop now it comes back and it will it will return null obviously because we are not if it, it can end in two ways it can either end here or it can end in the null so now you have written null and the same thing will happen in the now we need to search from this side now it now this will uh, will be the primary node 
and it will check for this side so similarly uh, the same thing happens in d and they both try to uh, this this while loop will will continue till the source data or, and the destination any any of these is is empty or if there is any uh, collision so this is a very simply simple uh, explanation uh, that i'm going that i just told you this is about, so the author has iterated all this and uh, the dif and finally when there is a, a merge or when there is a collision we are actually supposed to merge these two nodes so when we merge these two nodes uh, it means that we have uh, formed a proper path and then we will return the linked list of this particular person this is nothing but the path it is going to get all those uh, you know it is going to remove and it is going to add it into a single path and it is going to return a linked list of person so yeah that's it guys so this is what is happening in this long chunk of code uh yeah for the first time if you read it might be a little tricky but uh, once if you go through uh, a number of times you can easily understand so these are all the different trade offs uh, what you need to do if the users are so many what is the different solution uh, how do you uh, how do you smartly divide people when there are so many uh, when, the, when the data is too much so this is all about video this is just a simple approach uh, if you uh guys are facing a problem reading uh, you know crack in the coding interview book then my interview my uh, video would really help you uh, i hope this uh, explanation uh, uh, helped you guys understand what uh, this particular uh, problem is all about if you like the video please like it uh, and subscribe to my channel thank you so much bye